I'm glad you could join us. Go ahead and stab the like button and stick around for the next untold story. In the rural outskirts of Missouri, where fields stretch endlessly beneath the vast open sky, lived a farmer named John Lawson. He had inherited the land from his father, as his father had from his grandfather before him. The farm had been in the Lawson family for generations, and John took pride in continuing the legacy. He lived a simple life, working the land from dawn to dusk, growing corn, wheat, and soybeans. He was alone on the farm, his wife having passed away years earlier, and his children having moved to the city. It was early autumn, and the harvest season was in full swing. The days were long, but John didn't mind. The farm was his life. He spent his days driving the combine harvester through the golden fields, the rhythmic hum of the machine a constant companion. One evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the sky turned a deep fiery orange, John noticed something strange in the westernmost field. Among the tall stalks of corn, there was a section where the plants were withered and dead, as if something had sucked the life out of them. The patch was about the size of a small barn and perfectly circular, the crops within it brown and brittle. John frowned, cutting the engine of the combine and climbing down. He walked toward the dead patch, the dry corn stalks crunching under his boots. The air was thick with the smell of decay, and a sense of unease settled over him. He had never seen anything like this before. As he reached the edge of the circle, John knelt down and ran his fingers through the dry soil. It was oddly cold, almost as if it had been refrigerated. There was no sign of insects or disease. Nothing that could explain why the crops had died so suddenly and in such a precise pattern. Disturbed, John stood up and looked around, but the farm was silent, save for the rustling of the wind through the corn. He decided to head back to the house and call the local agricultural extension office in the morning. They would surely have an explanation. That night, John couldn't sleep. He lay in bed staring at the ceiling. The image of the dead crops burned into his mind. There was something unnatural about it something that didn't sit right with him. As the hours ticked by, his unease grew, and the house, usually a place of comfort, felt cold and unwelcoming. At around midnight, John was jolted awake by a loud thudding noise. It sounded like something heavy had fallen outside. He sat up in bed, his heart racing. The sound came again, followed by a low, almost imperceptible hum that seemed to vibrate through the walls. John grabbed his shotgun from under the bed and quietly made his way to the front door. He opened it cautiously, the cool night air washing over him. The farm was bathed in pale moonlight, the shadows long and deep. He couldn't see anything out of place, but the thudding noise persisted, coming from the direction of the western field. Gun in hand, John headed toward the sound, his pulse quickening. As he approached the field, the hum grew louder, resonating in his chest. He reached the edge of the field and stopped staring in disbelief. The circular patch of dead crops was glowing faintly, a sickly green light emanating from the soil. The hum was coming from beneath the ground, and the air was filled with an unnatural stillness. John's instincts screamed at him to turn back, to run to the safety of the house, but he was rooted to the spot, unable to tear his eyes away. <laughs> Suddenly, the ground in the center of the circle began to bulge upward, as if something beneath the earth was trying to break free. John raised his shotgun, his hands trembling. The bulge grew larger, the soil cracking and splitting. A foul metallic odor filled the air, making John gag. The ground erupted, and something large and black burst through the soil. It was a mass of writhing tendrils, slick and oily, reaching skyward like the limbs of some nightmarish creature. The thing was alive, and it pulsed with an unnatural energy the glow intensifying as the hum reached a deafening pitch. John fired his shotgun, the blast echoing across the farm. The pellet struck the mass, but it had no effect. The tendrils lashed out, moving with unnatural speed. One of them wrapped around John's leg, yanking him off his feet and dragging him toward the center of the circle. He screamed, the shotgun falling from his grasp as he clawed at the ground, trying to break free. The tendril was cold and slimy, its grip tightening with every second. As he was pulled closer to the pulsating mass, the hum grew so loud that it drowned out his screams. John's vision blurred as the thing pulled him into the center of the circle. The ground beneath him opened up, revealing a pit of darkness that seemed to go on forever 
The last thing he saw before the darkness swallowed him was the twisted, writhing mass of tendrils glowing with that sickly green light. When John didn't show up at the local feed store the next morning, his absence was noted, but it wasn't until the following day that anyone thought to check on him. A neighbor drove out to the Lawson farm, but the house was empty, the fields eerily silent. The sheriff was called, and a search was conducted, but there was no sign of John. The farm was left as it was, the fields abandoned and overgrown. The western field, where the dead crops had been, was avoided by those who knew the story. They whispered about the strange light and the thudding noise, and some claimed to hear the hum late at night when the wind blew just right. Years passed, and the story of John Lawson became a local legend, a tale told by farmers and townsfolk around campfires. They spoke of the glowing circle, the pulsating mass of tendrils, and the farmer who was never seen again. The farm remained abandoned, a place shrouded in mystery and fear. No one dared to venture too close, and the land slowly reclaimed the fields. But on certain nights, when the moon was full and the air was still, some claimed they could see a faint green light glowing from the western field and hear a low hum that seemed to come from deep within the earth. And though the farm was forgotten by all but the oldest residents, the legend lived on, a reminder of the horrors that can lurk beneath the surface of even the most peaceful places. The years passed, and John Lawson's disappearance became part of the local folklore, a ghost story to frighten children and caution newcomers. The abandoned farm, now overgrown with weeds and tangled vines, was left to the elements. The house slowly decayed, its windows shattered and its walls covered in creeping ivy. The fields, once golden with crops, turned wild and unkempt. But the western field, the one with the strange circle of dead crops, remained untouched. The vegetation around it grew thick and wild, but nothing ever sprouted within the circle. The strange phenomenon drew the occasional curiosity seeker, but most left with a sense of unease, whispering of an unnatural cold that lingered in the air and an odd, low hum that seemed to vibrate through the ground. As the decades wore on, the legend of John Lawson faded into obscurity, remembered only by the town's oldest residents. The farm became a place avoided by most, its eerie silence a deterrent to even the most adventurous. But there were always those who sought out the thrill of the unknown, drawn to the mystery like moths to a flame. One such group was a team of paranormal investigators. They had heard of the Lawson Farm through local tales and decided to explore it for their popular online channel. The team consisted of four members, Darren, the lead investigator, Michelle, the tech expert, Luis, the skeptic, and Jessica, the sensitive, who claimed to be able to feel spirits. The group arrived at the farm late one evening just as the sun was setting. The sky was painted in shades of orange and purple, casting long shadows across the overgrown fields. The house loomed in the distance, its silhouette dark and foreboding. Looks like the perfect setting for a ghost story, Darren said, setting up the camera. This is going to be great. Michelle unpacked the equipment, setting up thermal cameras and EMF detectors. Luis, ever the skeptic, rolled his eyes. I'm telling you, there's nothing here but an old farm. You're all chasing shadows. Jessica, however, was silent. She stood at the edge of the western field, staring at the patch of dead crops that had somehow remained unchanged for decades. The air around her was still, the silence so deep it was almost oppressive. There's something wrong here, Jessica whispered, her voice barely audible. I can feel it. Something, something terrible happened. Darren joined her, looking at the patch of dead crops. This must be the spot, he said, his excitement barely contained. Let's start filming. As they began their investigation, the air grew colder, the temperature dropping rapidly. The equipment picked up faint readings, but nothing substantial. They spent hours wandering the farm, documenting the decay, and talking about the legend of John Lawson. But as the night wore on, the sense of unease grew. We're not getting much, Luis said, glancing at his watch. Maybe it's time to pack up. Just as he spoke, Jessica gasped, her eyes wide with fear. Do you hear that? She asked, her voice trembling. The group fell silent, and then they heard it. A low, resonant hum, barely audible at first, but growing louder with each passing second. The sound seemed to come from deep within the earth, vibrating through the ground and into their bones. 
It's just the wind, Luis said, but his voice lacked conviction. It's not the wind, Michelle whispered, her eyes fixed on the patch of dead crops. Look! The ground within the circle began to pulse, faintly glowing with that sickly green light the townspeople had whispered about. The hum grew louder, more insistent, and the temperature continued to drop, the air growing so cold that their breath fogged in front of them. This... this isn't right, Darren said, stepping back. We should go. But it was too late. The ground in the center of the circle began to bulge, just as it had the night John Lawson disappeared. The soil cracked and split, and a foul odor filled the air like rotting metal and sulfur. We need to leave, now! Jessica screamed, turning to run. But the ground erupted before they could move, and the mass of writhing tendrils burst through the soil, just as it had all those years ago. The thing was massive, larger than any of them could have imagined. The tendrils lashed out, moving with unnatural speed, their slick, oily surface glistening in the pale moonlight. The sickly green glow intensified, casting eerie shadows across the field. Michelle dropped the camera, her eyes wide with terror. The tendrils wrapped around her leg, pulling her off her feet. She screamed, clawing at the ground as the thing dragged her toward the pit that had opened in the center of the circle. Darren grabbed her hand, trying to pull her back, but the tendrils were too strong. They wrapped around her torso, lifting her into the air. With a sickening lurch, Michelle was pulled into the pit, her screams cut off as the darkness swallowed her whole. Run! Darren shouted, but the tendrils were already upon them. Luis tried to fight back, swinging a broken branch at the writhing mass, but it was useless. The tendrils wrapped around his waist, pulling him into the air. He struggled, but the grip tightened, crushing the breath from his lungs. He was dragged into the pit, his eyes wide with terror as he disappeared into the darkness. Jessica and Darren ran, their hearts pounding with fear. The tendrils lashed out, tearing through the air around them. Jessica tripped and fell, the tendrils catching her ankle. She screamed, clawing at the ground as she was pulled backward. Darren reached for her, but the tendrils wrapped around her leg, pulling her out of his grasp. He watched in horror as she was dragged into the pit, her screams echoing in the night. The thing turned its attention to Darren, who was now the last one standing. He backed away, his body trembling with fear. The tendrils lashed out, wrapping around his arms and legs, lifting him off the ground. As he was pulled toward the pit, Darren felt a cold, unnatural energy course through his body. The sickly green light enveloped him, and he felt a crushing weight pressing down on him, suffocating him. He was pulled into the darkness, the earth closing around him. The last thing he saw was the twisted, writhing mass of tendrils glowing with that unearthly light before the darkness swallowed him whole. The next morning, the townspeople noticed that the air around the old Lawson farm was eerily still. The unnatural cold that had settled over the area was gone, replaced by an almost stifling heat. The farm seemed even more desolate than before, the fields overgrown and silent. The group of paranormal investigators was never seen again and their equipment was found abandoned near the patch of dead crops. The sheriff organized a search, but no trace of them was ever found. The only clue was a camera, still recording, which had captured the last moments of their terror before the screen cut to static. The legend of the Lawson farm grew darker, whispered about only in hushed tones. The farm became a place of fear, a cursed land where the shadows were longer and the air was heavy with something dark and unnatural. As the years passed, the farm was left to rot, forgotten by all but the most curious souls. But those who ventured too close spoke of a low hum that could still be heard on certain nights, a vibration that seemed to come from deep within the earth, and an eerie, sickly green light that sometimes glowed from the heart of the western field. The story of John Lawson and those who disappeared after him became a warning, a tale of the darkness that lies beneath the surface waiting for the right moment to rise again. And though the farm lay silent, the evil that had claimed so many lives remained, lurking just below the ground, biding its time until it could reach out and claim its next victims. In the quiet rural town of Stillwater, nestled deep in the heartland, life was simple and unchanging. The town's population had dwindled over the years, leaving behind only those who worked the land and cherished the isolation. 
Among them was Henry McLeod, a middle-aged farmer who had lived his entire life on the land his ancestors had settled generations ago. Henry's farm was modest but enough to sustain him. He grew corn and soybeans, kept a few cattle, and tended to his chickens. His days were long, beginning before dawn and ending after sunset, but he found solace in the routine. The farm was his life, and he was proud of what he had built. One evening, as Henry was finishing his work for the day, he noticed something unusual. The sun was setting, casting a deep orange glow over the fields, but in the farthest corner of his property, where the cornfields met the dense woods, there was a patch of darkness that seemed out of place. The shadows there were deeper, almost unnaturally so, as if the light couldn't penetrate them. Henry frowned, wiping the sweat from his brow. He had walked those fields countless times and he knew every inch of his land. But this was different. The darkness in that corner seemed to pulse, like something alive. Curiosity gnawed at him, but he decided to wait until the next day to investigate. It was late, and he was tired. That night, as he lay in bed, Henry's thoughts kept drifting back to that patch of darkness. He told himself it was nothing, perhaps a trick of the light, or the shadows cast by the trees, but a nagging sense of unease settled over him. Sleep came fitfully, plagued by dreams of dark shapes moving silently through the corn. The next morning, Henry was up before dawn, as usual. He had almost convinced himself that the darkness was just his imagination. But as he looked out over his fields, he saw that the shadowy patch was still there, now more defined in the early morning light. Determined to put his mind at ease, Henry grabbed his hat and set off across the field. The air was crisp and the dew clung to the tall corn stalks, brushing against his legs as he walked. As he approached the darkened area, the birds that had been chirping in the trees fell silent, and a heavy stillness settled over the land. When he reached the edge of the shadowy patch, Henry stopped in his tracks. The darkness wasn't just a shadow, it was a tangible, physical presence. The air within it was cold, far colder than it should have been on a summer morning. The ground was hard and brittle. The corn stalks within the patch withered and blackened as if something had drained the life from them. A chill ran down Henry's spine. He reached out cautiously, his fingers brushing the edge of the shadow. The moment he made contact, a wave of nausea swept over him, and he stumbled back, his hand tingling with a strange numbness. What in God's name, he muttered, shaking his hand to get rid of the sensation. Henry's instinct was to leave it alone, to walk away and pretend he hadn't seen it. But something compelled him to stay, a morbid curiosity mixed with a growing sense of dread. He took a step forward, then another, until he was standing within the shadow. The world around him seemed to shift. The air grew colder, and the sunlight dimmed, as if being filtered through a thick haze. The sound of the wind rustling the corn faded, replaced by a low, almost imperceptible hum that seemed to vibrate through the ground and into his bones. Henry's breath caught in his throat. He had never felt anything like this before. A presence, something old and malevolent, lurking just beneath the surface. His heart pounded in his chest, and every instinct screamed at him to run, but he was rooted to the spot. As he stood there, the ground beneath his feet began to tremble. The blackened corn stalks around him quivered, and the hum grew louder, more insistent. Henry looked down and saw the soil cracking and shifting, as if something was moving beneath it. A sense of overwhelming terror gripped him. He turned to run, but the ground erupted with a force that knocked him off his feet. He landed hard, the breath knocked out of him, and scrambled to get up. But as he did, he saw what had burst from the earth. It was a figure, humanoid but twisted, its form obscured by darkness. The thing was tall and gaunt, with limbs that were too long and bent at unnatural angles. Its face was a mask of shadow, with eyes that glowed faintly in the dim light, burning with a cold, inhuman intelligence. Henry's mind struggled to comprehend what he was seeing. The thing moved with a jerky, unnatural gait, its long fingers clawing at the air as it advanced toward him. The ground continued to tremble beneath it, as if the very earth was recoiling from its presence. Desperate. Henry stumbled to his feet and ran, his heart hammering in his chest. The cornfield, once familiar and safe, had become a maze of terror, the tall stalks seeming to close in around him. He could hear the thing behind him, moving through the corn with a speed that defied its twisted form. He ran blindly, his only thought to escape, to reach the safety of his house.
But no matter how fast he ran, the thing was always just behind him, its presence a cold, creeping dread that threatened to overwhelm him. Finally, Henry burst out of the cornfield and into the open yard, his legs burning with exhaustion. He glanced back and saw the thing standing at the edge of the field, its shadowy form blending into the darkness of the cornstalks. It didn't pursue him further, but stood there, watching him with those cold, glowing eyes. Henry stumbled into his house and slammed the door behind him, his chest heaving with fear. He grabbed his shotgun from the wall, his hands trembling as he loaded it with shaking fingers. He stood by the window, watching the field, but the thing didn't move. It simply watched. For hours, Henry stood guard, the shotgun gripped tightly in his hands. But as the sun began to set, the thing slowly retreated into the darkness of the corn, disappearing from sight. The air warmed, and the oppressive feeling lifted, but the terror remained. That night, Henry didn't sleep. He sat by the window, the shotgun by his side, waiting for the thing to return. But the hours passed, and the farm remained silent, the only sound the distant call of an owl in the woods. When morning came, Henry cautiously ventured outside, his heart pounding in his chest. The shadowy patch in the field was gone, the earth still and undisturbed, as if nothing had happened. But the blackened cornstalks remained, a grim reminder of the terror that had visited his farm. Over the next few days, Henry tried to return to his normal routine, but the sense of dread never left him. He couldn't bring himself to go near the western field, and every night he sat by the window, waiting for the thing to return. But it never did, at least not in the same way. Instead, strange things began to happen around the farm. Objects moved on their own, doors slammed shut without warning, and the animals grew restless, their eyes wide with fear. At night, Henry would hear footsteps outside his house, slow and deliberate, but when he looked, there was no one there. The thing had left, but its presence lingered, a shadow over the farm that refused to fade. The once comforting routines of farm life became a nightmare, and Henry found himself growing more paranoid and isolated. He stopped going into town, stopped speaking to his neighbors, stopped answering the phone. The farm, once a place of solace, had become a prison. The fields that had sustained his family for generations now felt like a graveyard, the earth tainted by whatever had risen from it. And as the days turned into weeks, Henry began to realize that he was no longer alone on his land. He could feel the thing's presence, watching him from the shadows, waiting. The hum returned, faint at first, but growing louder with each passing day. He knew it was only a matter of time before it came for him, before the earth beneath his feet would crack open again and swallow him whole. Henry stopped sleeping, stopped eating, stopped caring for the farm. He simply waited, the shotgun always by his side, knowing that when the thing finally came, there would be no escape. And in the stillness of the night, as the wind rustled through the corn, Henry heard the hum growing louder, felt the ground begin to tremble beneath his feet, and knew that his time had come. Henry's breath came in short, ragged gasps as he sat in the darkened farmhouse, the shotgun heavy in his trembling hands. The hum that had haunted his nights was louder now, vibrating through the very walls of his home and the cold, creeping sensation of dread had returned with full force. He knew that whatever had risen from the earth was coming for him, and this time, there would be no running. Outside, the wind had picked up, howling through the cornfields like a chorus of mournful voices. The darkness beyond his windows seemed impenetrable, and despite the moon hanging high in the sky, no light touched the land. It was as if the shadows had thickened, swallowing the farm whole. Henry's eyes were bloodshot from days without sleep, his mind frayed at the edges. He had lived his entire life on this farm, but now it felt like a stranger's land, hostile and alien. The walls of his home, once a place of safety, seemed to close in on him, pressing him toward the inevitable confrontation. The hum intensified, and Henry felt the ground beneath the farmhouse tremble. A low, resonant rumble echoed up through the floorboards, shaking the furniture and rattling the windows. The thing was rising, forcing its way up from the depths of the earth, and there was no stopping it. Henry stood, his legs unsteady, and made his way to the front door. His heart pounded in his chest, each beat a drum of fear, but he forced himself to keep moving. He knew he couldn't stay in the house. He couldn't wait for the thing to come to him. 
If this was to be his end, he would face it on his own terms, outside in the fields that had been his life. As he stepped outside, the cold hit him like a physical force, sapping the warmth from his bones. The air was thick, almost suffocating, and the wind had died down, leaving an eerie stillness. The hum was all around him now, a constant, pulsating noise that seemed to resonate within his very soul. Henry looked out over his fields, his eyes straining to see through the darkness. There, in the farthest corner, he saw it, the patch of earth where the cornstalks had withered and died. The shadowy figure was rising once again, its form twisting and contorting as it pulled itself free from the ground. The sickly green light that had haunted his nightmares was back, glowing faintly from within the depths of the shadow. The thing stood tall, taller than any man, its long limbs ending in clawed hands that reached out toward him. Its face was a void, an absence of light, but Henry could feel its gaze on him, a cold, piercing stare that chilled him to the core. He raised the shotgun, his hands shaking so violently that he almost dropped it. The thing began to move toward him, each step slow and deliberate, the earth trembling beneath its weight. The hum grew louder, deafening now, and Henry knew that this was the moment. With a scream of defiance, Henry pulled the trigger, the shotgun roaring in the stillness of the night. The blast echoed across the farm, and for a brief moment, he thought he saw the thing stagger. But when the smoke cleared, it was still there, unscathed, and it continued its relentless approach. Henry fired again and again, but the shotgun might as well have been a toy. The thing seemed to absorb the shots, the darkness around it thickening with each blast. The air grew colder still, the ground shaking more violently, and Henry knew that his time was up. The thing was upon him now, towering over him, its clawed hands reaching out. The sickly green light flared, and Henry felt a crushing pressure around his chest, forcing the air from his lungs. His vision blurred, and he fell to his knees, the shotgun slipping from his grasp. The hum was inside his head now, a constant, agonizing drone that drowned out all other thoughts. He tried to scream, but no sound came out. The thing's claws wrapped around him, lifting him off the ground as if he weighed nothing. As he was pulled toward the shadow, Henry felt the life being drained from him. His strength ebbed away, replaced by a cold, numbing darkness that spread through his body. The green light surrounded him, and the last thing he saw was the twisted, nightmarish form of the thing, its void-like face, inches from his own. With a final, desperate gasp, Henry was pulled into the shadow, the darkness swallowing him whole. The sickly green light flared once more, then faded, leaving nothing but the empty, lifeless fields. The next morning, the sun rose over the farm, casting a warm, golden light over the land. The shadows had receded, and the hum was gone. The farm was silent, the only sounds the distant call of birds and the rustling of the wind through the corn. But Henry MacLeod was gone, vanished without a trace. The farmhouse stood empty, the doors wide open, the shotgun lying on the ground where he had dropped it. The fields, once vibrant and full of life, were now cold and barren, as if the land itself had been drained of its vitality. The townspeople noticed Henry's absence, but could find no explanation for his disappearance. The farm, once a place of pride and hard work, became known as a cursed place, where no crops would grow and no animals would graze. The fields were left to wither, the farmhouse abandoned to the elements. And though the farm was eventually forgotten, left to rot and decay, the legend of Henry MacLeod and the shadow that took him lived on in hushed whispers and dark tales. It was said that on certain nights, when the wind was still and the moon was full, a low hum could be heard coming from the western field, and a faint, sickly green light would glow from within the shadows. The farm remained untouched, a place shunned by all who knew the story, for they knew that whatever had taken Henry MacLeod was still there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for its next victim. And those who ventured too close would hear the hum, feel the cold, and see the darkness begin to rise once more. In the quiet countryside of southeastern Kansas, where the nearest neighbor was miles away and the nights were as dark as pitch, lived a farmer named Tom Weaver. Tom was a man of simple routines, deeply connected to the land his family had farmed for generations. He lived alone in the old farmhouse, his wife having passed years earlier, and his children having moved away to pursue lives in the city. 
The solitude didn't bother him much. He preferred the company of the fields, the animals, and the changing seasons. Tom's farm was modest, but it provided everything he needed. He grew corn, wheat, and soybeans, and he kept a few cows and chickens. The days were long and hard, but they were fulfilling. The land, however, was starting to show signs of strain. The weather had been unpredictable. Too much rain one year, drought the next, and Tom had begun to worry about the future. One summer evening, as the sun dipped below the horizon and the sky turned a dusky purple, Tom noticed something unusual while checking his fields. A section of the wheat field seemed off, stalks bent at strange angles, patches of earth churned up as if something heavy had been dragged across it. It was a stark contrast to the rest of the field, which stood tall and golden, ready for harvest. Curious, Tom walked over to inspect the area. As he drew closer, a strange, uneasy feeling settled in the pit of his stomach. The air around the disturbed patch was unnaturally still, and the usual sounds of the evening, crickets chirping, birds calling, seemed to have vanished. The silence was thick, pressing down on him. Tom knelt to examine the soil. It was loose, almost as if it had been recently dug up. There were no signs of machinery tracks, no footprints, no reason for the disruption. He stood, scanning the horizon, but saw nothing out of the ordinary. Shaking off his unease, he made a mental note to check the area again in the morning and headed back to the farmhouse. That night, Tom couldn't sleep. He tossed and turned, his thoughts drifting back to the strange patch in the field. His mind conjured up wild explanations, animals maybe, or a freak windstorm, but none of them felt right. There was something unnatural about it, something he couldn't quite put his finger on. The following morning, Tom returned to the field as soon as the sun was up. The disturbed area looked even worse in the daylight. The soil was blackened in places, the wheat stalks twisted and broken. As he walked through the patch, he noticed something that sent a chill down his spine. Small, circular depressions in the earth. Almost like footprints, but not made by any animal he knew. The circles were about six inches across, perfectly round and spaced evenly apart, as if something had moved through the field on spindly legs. Tom's first thought was to call someone, maybe the sheriff, maybe a neighbor. But what would he say? That something had walked through his field in the night, leaving no trace but these strange marks. He wasn't sure anyone would believe him, and truth be told, he wasn't sure he believed it himself. Instead, Tom decided to keep an eye on the field. He spent the day working as usual, but his mind kept drifting back to those marks, that disturbed earth. As evening approached, he found himself dreading the coming night. The sun set, and Tom sat by the window, his shotgun resting across his lap. The farmhouse was quiet, the only sound the ticking of the old clock on the mantel. Outside, the darkness seemed thicker than usual, the night pressing in on the house like a living thing. Around midnight, just as Tom was beginning to doze off, he heard it, a low, rhythmic thumping sound coming from the direction of the wheat field. His heart leaped into his throat. He grabbed his flashlight and shotgun and stepped outside, the screen door creaking loudly in the stillness. The night was unnaturally dark, the moon obscured by heavy clouds. Tom's flashlight beam cut through the blackness, illuminating the path ahead. The thumping continued, growing louder as he approached the field. When he reached the edge of the wheat, he saw them, figures moving through the field, their outlines barely visible in the dim light. They were tall, spindly, and moved with an unnatural grace, their bodies almost skeletal. Tom's breath caught in his throat. He wanted to call out, to demand who they were and what they were doing on his land, but fear held him silent. The figures seemed to glide through the wheat, their movements slow and deliberate. As they passed, the wheat bent and twisted as it had the night before, the earth beneath them churning as if something heavy was being dragged along with them. Tom's grip on the shotgun tightened, his knuckles white. He knew, deep down, that firing at them would do no good. Then, one of the figures turned toward him. It was close now, so close that Tom could see its face, or rather, the absence of one. The head was smooth, featureless, like a mannequin, with no eyes, no mouth, no nose, just a blank, pale surface. Yet Tom felt it looking at him, felt its gaze like a physical weight pressing down on him. Paralyzed with fear, 
Tom watched as the figure began to move toward him, its long legs bending at unnatural angles. The other figures stopped their slow march and turned as well, all of them now focused on him. The thumping sound grew louder, more insistent, matching the pounding of his heart. Tom stumbled back, nearly dropping the flashlight. He turned and ran, his feet slipping on the uneven ground as he sprinted toward the safety of the farmhouse. The figures didn't follow, but he could feel them watching him, their gaze burning into his back as he fled. He reached the farmhouse and slammed the door behind him, locking it tight. His chest heaved with panic as he backed away from the door, his eyes darting to the windows, half expecting to see one of those things staring back at him from the darkness. But there was nothing. The night was silent once more, the oppressive stillness returned. Tom spent the rest of the night sitting in his kitchen, shotgun across his lap, eyes glued to the door. He didn't sleep, didn't even try. When the first light of dawn crept through the windows, he finally allowed himself to relax, just a little. The next day, Tom went back to the field. The disturbed patch was worse than ever. The earth churned up and blackened, the wheat stalks mangled beyond recognition. The circular depressions were everywhere now, hundreds of them, crisscrossing the field in chaotic patterns. The air smelled of something acrid, something burnt. Tom knew he couldn't stay here, not anymore. Whatever those things were, they were getting bolder, their presence more invasive. He had to leave, to get as far away from this place as possible. But as he turned to head back to the house, something caught his eye. Movement, just beyond the tree line at the edge of his property. It was one of the figures standing perfectly still, watching him. As he locked eyes with it, a cold realization settled over him. They weren't just passing through, they were watching him, studying him, and they weren't going to stop. Tom ran back to the farmhouse, his heart pounding in his chest. He grabbed a few essentials, a bag of clothes, some food, his shotgun, and threw them in the truck. He didn't bother locking the door behind him. He had to get away, had to leave the farm behind. As he drove down the dirt road, he glanced back at the house one last time. For a brief moment, he thought he saw movement in the windows, a pale figure standing in the shadows. But he didn't stop. He couldn't stop. Tom didn't know where he was going, didn't have a plan beyond getting away from that farm. But as he drove through the empty countryside, a cold fear gripped him. He could still feel them watching. Their blank faces turned toward him, their gaze following him no matter how far he went. And deep down, he knew that no matter how far he ran, he would never truly escape. The Watchers had found him, and they would always be there, just beyond the edge of the light, waiting for the moment when he would finally be alone in the dark. Tom drove through the endless stretch of countryside, his truck's tires kicking up dust as he sped away from the farm that had been his home for as long as he could remember. The sun was climbing higher in the sky, but the warmth that usually brought did nothing to ease the cold dread that gnawed at him. The faces, those smooth, featureless faces, were burned into his mind, haunting his every thought. As the miles passed, Tom began to notice something unsettling. The landscape around him, which should have been familiar, seemed distorted, unfamiliar. The trees were taller, their branches twisting in unnatural directions, and the fields, which should have been golden with ripening crops, were barren. The soil cracked and dry. It was as if the very land itself had been twisted by the presence of those things, the Watchers. Panic surged through him as he realized he wasn't escaping them. He was driving deeper into their territory. No matter how fast he drove, how far he went, the world around him grew more alien, more twisted by their influence. Then, the truck's engine began to sputter. The needle on the gas gauge suddenly plummeted, despite the tank being nearly full when he left. The engine coughed and died, leaving Tom stranded on the side of the road, surrounded by a landscape that had turned against him. Desperation clawed at him as he climbed out of the truck. He scanned the horizon, looking for any sign of civilization, but there was nothing. Just the endless stretch of twisted trees and dead fields. The wind had picked up, carrying with it a faint, rhythmic thumping sound that made his blood run cold. Tom grabbed his shotgun and the bag he had packed and started walking, his steps quickening as the sense of being watched intensified. He could feel their presence, the watchers, following him, unseen but always there, just out of sight. As the day wore on, Tom grew more disoriented. The road beneath his feet seemed to stretch on forever, 
looping back on itself in impossible ways. No matter how far he walked, he found himself back where he started, the same twisted trees and barren fields surrounding him. By evening, the sun began to set, casting long shadows across the landscape. Tom's fear reached a fever pitch as he realized he was trapped, caught in some kind of nightmarish loop. He was running out of options, out of time. The shadows lengthened, and as the last light of day faded, the thumping sound grew louder, more insistent. Tom looked around wildly, trying to pinpoint its source, but the darkness was closing in, swallowing the land in blackness. And then he saw them. The watchers emerged from the shadows, their pale, featureless faces glowing faintly in the dim light. They moved toward him with that same unnatural grace, their spindly limbs bending at impossible angles. Tom raised the shotgun, his hands shaking so violently that he could barely keep the barrel steady. Stay back, he shouted, his voice trembling with fear. Stay away from me. But the watchers didn't stop. They closed in, surrounding him on all sides, their blank faces staring at him with an intensity that made his skin crawl. The thumping sound grew deafening, echoing inside his skull, and Tom realized with a sickening certainty that the noise was coming from within him, from his own heartbeat, distorted and amplified by the presence of these entities. In a final act of desperation, Tom fired the shotgun. The blast lit up the night for a brief moment, but when the smoke cleared, the watchers were still there, unharmed. They were closer now, close enough that Tom could see the faint outlines of their bodies beneath the shadows. Thin, emaciated forms that seemed barely capable of holding themselves upright. Tom stumbled back, his breath coming in ragged gasps. The shotgun slipped from his grasp, useless against these things. He fell to his knees, his mind spiraling into panic as the watchers closed in, their presence overwhelming. He wanted to run, to scream, but his body refused to obey. The watchers were all around him now, their faces inches from his their cold, empty gaze boring into him. The thumping in his head reached a crescendo, drowning out all thought, all reason. And then, as if responding to some unspoken command, the watchers reached out with their long, spindly fingers. They touched Tom's skin, and a wave of cold swept through him, freezing him to the core. He tried to scream, but no sound came out. His body convulsed, his vision blurring as the coldness seeped into his very bones. Tom's mind shattered, as the watchers began to pull him apart, not physically, but mentally, spiritually. He felt his consciousness fragmenting, his memories and thoughts unraveling like frayed threads. The watchers were consuming him, taking him piece by piece until there was nothing left. As the last remnants of Tom's awareness faded into the void, the watchers receded, melting back into the shadows from which they had come. The night was silent once more, the thumping gone, the land still and cold. The road where Tom had walked was empty, the twisted trees and barren fields stretching out into the darkness. The farmhouse, once a place of life and warmth, stood abandoned, its windows dark, its doors hanging open. No one in the nearby town ever saw Tom Weaver again. His truck was found miles away, the engine dead, the interior coated in a fine layer of dust, as if it had been abandoned for years. But there was no sign of Tom, no trace of where he had gone. The townspeople whispered of his disappearance, of the strange events that had begun to plague the area. Some claimed to see pale figures moving through the fields at night, their blank faces watching from the shadows. Others spoke of a low, rhythmic thumping sound that echoed through the darkness, growing louder as the night wore on. But no one dared to go looking for Tom, not after what had happened. The farm was left to rot, the land slowly consumed by the encroaching wilderness and those who knew the story stayed far away, fearing that the Watchers, whatever they were, might turn their gaze on them next. In the end, the Watchers were patient. They had all the time in the world, waiting in the shadows, biding their time. And when the night was dark enough, when the world was quiet and still, they would return, searching for their next victim. Thank you for listening. Now watch this video, 